Kicking the Coaster. I'm your host, Dale, and today I'm not in the studio or at my home. Actually, I am traveling out into the big wide open. Now, he was telling me about this, uh, about this recipe about using a, a, a gluten free. That's right. So, people like myself trying to go gluten free, and one of the southern dishes that we like is fried chicken. And the problem with gluten free fried chicken is there's no gluten to hold it all together. But I found a recipe and I'm going to share it with you. And what we have here is some gluten-free all-purpose flour, which is very important because you got to get the kind that's got the xanthan gum and the quinoa and the millet and the rice, or else you're just going to have a mess. And you're not going to have good fried chicken. Now, and also, now this right here is actually kosher. Yes, this Where is, is the brand is a Jewish company. They do a lot of. Um, Jewish bakery items, special things for the festivals, Hanukkah, and it does have the kosher symbol on it, so it is a kosher certified product. And you can get these big bags, I think, uh, I think it was like $11, something like that, at Sam's Club, and it is five pounds of flour you can use cup for cup for wheat, and it is really good. It has a good flavor and a good texture, and we're going to use it for our fried chicken. Oh, yeah, just how good. <laughs> <laughs> and then we use, I fry in coconut oil. I find it to be the best frying oil. Uh, a lot of people like to cook in vegetable oil, peanut oil, corn oil. And I've tried them all. And uh, I find coconut, it's good for your heart. It's good for your brain. It's good for just about anything. And it's good for frying. And I, I use large, brown, not organic, but, you know, as close to as you can get without spending $5 a dozen. Some regular salt and pepper and a little bit of poultry seasoning to kind of give it a something a little different than what you might get out of regular fried chicken. Okay. Now I know I, uh, I got switched on to the coconut oil myself. Yeah. I, mean, I love olive oil. Oh yes. And but when I found out that the coconut oil actually when it's heated up, it doesn't burn as quick. That's right. And uh, it's actually like I said, all the, the nutrition and the yeah. value for it is actually healthy for your body. So if you never tried coconut oil in cooking or anything. Uh, we urge you to to try. It. Oh yes. Uh, also use it for other, doing other things as well. Yep. Um, Good for making toothpaste, shampoo, toothpaste, and soaps, yeah, everything. just about everything. Uh, uh, stuff for sunburns. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great. So, I right, I'll tell you what, man. I'm starting to smell the the oil again. The out. oil back here. <laughs> it's, brand, it's like it's calling for the chicken. Give me the chicken. So, to go ahead and what we need to do and. and uh, Get this start. Well, uh, first we gotta take the chicken and bread it, and there's a special technique I want to share with everybody because if you want to do this recipe, I want you to be able to. So we're gonna do a little close up. All right, we're gonna get things set up, and we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, so to begin our preparation, I cut up three leg quarters, thigh and drumstick, and um, I actually cut some of the extra skin and fat off because what I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to bread these first and I'm going to fry them up and I'm going to taste my recipe because I don't have an exact recipe. I don't have you know two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of seasoning or what have you. Uh, it's very you know old-fashioned just cut and dry kind of stuff. So I'm going to take these little bits here and I'm going to douse in my egg wash. Now the trick to gluten-free chicken is the egg wash. There's a lot of recipes they call when you, when you look up gluten-free fried chicken online, um, they have you do a regular milk and egg egg wash that's ineffective with gluten-free flours. It doesn't make it stick. And if you look here, you can see the gluten-free flour is sticking just like any other fried chicken. And uh, when you fry it, you're going to have a little bit of flour that comes off, which is normal, but you won't have a complete loss of all of your crunchy goodness. Put it right here in the coconut oil. And the trick to the egg wash is to just use eggs. I put five eggs in here and I beat them lightly. I didn't beat them too hard. Because you want the protein of the egg to hold on to the, the gluten free flour and um, get it well enough to keep the flour from uh, going all the way off. You can see I got my oil nice and hot. 
which is, if you've never fried chicken before, the secret to a good fried chicken is that skull, that hot oil when you get it first started. And uh, that's what makes the outside nice and crispy, gives it that crunchy texture, that little old feel in your mouth, that's part of uh, what makes fried chicken so yummy. Now these will cook quickly and be done fast because they're small pieces. And uh, once we get that, that done and we let it cool down a bit and taste it, we can adjust our recipe and uh, go for the full-fledged chicken. Alright, it looks like our testing nuggets are done. I'm going to put it in the strainer so that the oil drips off and your chicken's not too greasy. You always like a little bit of the fat in there to give it that touch of flavor, but too greasy and you got a mess on your hands. We're going to let this cool. I'm going to turn the oil down a little bit. And we're going to taste these. And if they taste good, we won't change the recipe. But if it tastes bad, too salty, too peppery, not enough salt, we'll change it up and we'll get the We'll get the real chicken fry in here in just a few minutes. Right, now we're gonna drench this drumstick in some of this egg wash. Now I like to do the drumsticks first. The rule with fried chicken, for those of you who don't know, is to get you a good skull, which is your initial hot oil fry. It gets that nice golden crust on there, like that. And uh, once you get your skull, then you take and you lower the temperature, and you put a lid on it, and you let it cook. And drumsticks will take about maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to uh, whoop, a little water in there. It'll take about 15, 20 minutes to cook to the bone. Um, you normally set it on medium to medium high to get the oil hot. And then you put um, put your lid on and put it down to medium low and let it sit in the oil and cook. And cast iron is one of the lost traditions of America, and um, there's just so much versatility to it. It does take a little work to maintain, but the flavor is pure. You don't have the slightly plasticky, you know, you don't have a metallic, like if you use aluminum, for example, um, I've known some people who use the thick aluminum frying pans, and it always has a metallic taste to it when it's done. And the non-stick, of course, most people understand by now that a typical Teflon or non-stick is extremely bad for your health. It leaches into your food, it flakes off, and digest it. And some research uh, suggests that it's actually so harmful for you that it might even cause cancer. Now, I don't know for sure, but that's what they say. And uh, with cast iron, you always have a purity of flavor. You always have excellent heat distribution, and these things can be passed down from generations. Now this pan is very unique. I found it at a scrapyard, cleaned it up, fired it up in a fire to get it good and burn out, so if they use pork, it's all burned out of it, now kosher and clean. And I rubbed it down with olive oil, and I baked it in an oven, and I don't use soap. If, for those of you who, who have a cast iron or have never used one, you never use soap. Never. Because the, the iron is porous, and it'll get in your food, and it'll make it horrible and nasty, and you'll have to wash it and wash it and wash it until you finally get it done. But a, a good kosher oil to season your pans with is olive oil. You get it nice and hot, put some olive oil in there, and spread it around, and it keeps it that, it, it, it seasons it, makes it non-stick, and uh, all around good for... Teach from rusting. Yeah. So, now that we've got a good skull, Go ahead and put the lid on it. 
turn it down to a low medium. And I'm just going to let it sit and I'll check on it maybe every five minutes so that um, it doesn't get too burnt on one side or you know too brown. And uh, in about 15-20 minutes our drumsticks will be cooked to the bone and they'll be ready to eat. Alright now, you can see uh, the flour has stuck to it. I mean there's a couple of spots where you have a little bit of bareness but um, the tendon's coming up on the drumstick and it's got that nice golden sheen to it. So we're calling this done. We're going to stick it over here and let some of that oil drain off so it's not so uh, greasy when you get your fingers on it. I'm going to let that one sit a little bit longer. And, uh, and bring the oil back up to temperature. And that's when you get started on the on the thighs. And it's the same basic process. You submerge it in a wash. With just a tablespoon of water, to make it a little bit easier to. Um, Alright. Overcook it, you can undercook it. You can get the spices wrong, the act of love. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's done. Hey, we're back, and I'll tell you what, brother, you're smelling good here. <laughs> and I'll tell you, the, the chick. Now we done, you done three drum sticks here. Yes, sir. And they take about 20 minutes. Well, roughly. From, from until they get this nice little golden texture to mm -hmm. them. And then about a half an hour for the bigger pieces like the thighs. Yeah. Yeah, or a chicken breast would probably take about 35 minutes. Um, just because it's such a big piece of meat, it's got to cook all the way to the bone. Okay. Well, in front of me, I have a piece of this delicious chicken. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so now, here's the big thing, he's been telling me about this, okay, so now, I asked him with the truck, and I was kind of hesitant, because the new gluten's got a particular flavor. Yep. So now, I was kind of hesitant, okay, what about the taste? Oh, I think it tastes better, especially with the coconut oil. Yes, yes, the coconut oil gives it um, a more sweeter flavor, as opposed to like corn oil or vegetable oil, it gives it a little acidic, and uh, it just really tops it off, and makes it really good all around. I got a fork, so I'm going to sit here, I'm going to go into it, and I'm going to taste this and see what it tastes like. I know it's still hot, but let's see the heat coming off of it. Oh, man. The smell. It's like if you go into any quality restaurant, mm -hmm. the smell, it, it's there. You can see that it's done. It's juicy. It's yep. not fried up. I mean, it's not dried out. It's, nope. Mmm. I think we have a new fan. <laughs> this is very tender. Yes. And it's not like sometimes the fried chicken we buy to is like that rubber taste to it. This is like a tender, moist piece of meat. That's good old southern cooking for you. Mmm. Oh man. <laughs> I think I've converted them. <laughs> oh. I think we got a new cook for Saco. <laughs> I do like to cook. I, uh, I used to attend a Sukkot where they had me do the barbecue every year. Mm -hmm. Somebody would bring like a whole lamb and they would have the quarters and stuff and they'd have me roast it over a fire. They do like it. Now you speak in my language now. <laughs> oh, man. You speak yeah, in man. my language. Uh, this is delicious. Let me urge you to try the gluten free um, flour. And like I said, the, what we have here today is kosher, so everything is kosher. Yep. But it does give it a great flavor. You get a great texture, the color, it's moist, and the flavor is, I mean, it is explosive oh, yeah. in your mouth. It's yeah. Like, boom. You don't want it to be rubbery. You mm. want it to be melt your mouth tender. So, um, yeah. So, right now he's got the other word, the thighs on the, on the as we say, on the chicken in the pan. <laughs> uh, so let's find that up and everything. So we're gonna get out of his way now, sir. 
Uh, Roger, I appreciate you letting us come oh, in here and film this thank for you. Me. Thank you. This is delicious. Listen, we appreciate you. Uh, I do love sharing. I do love sharing. Yeah. So he, he's going to take it. He's going he's gonna <laughs> to get himself quite a bit more. I don't blame him. So, uh, so for myself and for Bobby, thank you for inviting us uh, to come into your home and to your beautiful wife, Abigail. Uh, you know, to, for a <coughs> couple of coming into her home. And, that home is the sanctuary of the woman sometimes, and, and so and so we're blessed to have her. We we'll say thank you, ma'am, and uh, so thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well. Uh, once again, uh, try this chicken out. They're going to love it. It's good. So for myself, for Budgie, for his beautiful wife, uh, Abigail, for buying us here, thank you for watching Kicking and Coaching.